I'm Ethan Klein with well, Off the Record. Call us at 1 800 Talk Nice. Today we're uh, going to talk a few uh, NBA things. So, uh, first I'm going to take it over to Max, who's going to talk about the Western Conference playoff picture. Okay, so a lot of people have been debating about the Western Conference playoff picture, and there have been a lot of teams that people think uh, can contend. Um, as people know, the Warriors are the best of those teams. Um, so that's obvious. So I have the Warriors coming out of the West, or obviously my playoff picture of the Warriors at number one. Uh, all of the Thunder at number two. I think Westbrook and Paul George are going to have a lot of chemistry in their second year together, and I think Carmelo leaving uh, will help them. And I still have Steven Adams and some other pieces. And at three, I have the Houston Rockets. Uh, they're going to be good, and Chris Paul and James Harden, like Westbrook and George, are just keeping are uh, improving their relationship on, on the court and off the court. Then I have the Utah Jazz. The Utah Jazz were really impressive, and they're looking really good. Then I have Minnesota Timberwolves at five. Um, they look really good. They have a lot of pieces. I think they just need to have a, not, uh, a better year this year, and I think they can do that. Lakers at six. Uh, they got LeBron, and they got some other pieces, so I still think they're not n nearly as good as a lot of the other teams in the West. The Denver Nuggets at seven. Uh, they might be a sleeper in the playoffs. I think they have potential to be uh, to get to the uh, to get past a couple rounds in the playoffs. And Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, those young guys, Nikola Jokic are getting better. And they also have Paul Millsap and other pieces. And then in the eighth spot, um, this is a surprise pick, but I'll throw in the Sacramento Kings. Um, I think the Kings are. Um, really young, but they have a lot of potential. They have Bogdanovich, De'Aaron Fox, they got Yogi Ferrell, they have Marvin Bagley, Willie Cauley-Stein, um, and I think they're Buddy Hill, they have a uh, volume yeah. piece. Thank you, Max. Uh, the one thing I'm uh, going to disagree with you with is I put the Trailblazers at the 8 seed in, uh, for Sacramento, but uh, like your bold prediction. All right, right now we're going to take a caller. Uh, let's have Tyler from Grover's Alley, Nevada. Um, talk, talk about um, putting the uh, Kings in the, the at the eighth seed over teams like the uh, Trailblazers or the Pelicans. And the Pelicans, they did, uh, they had their playoff run where they swept the um, Trailblazers, and they did that without uh, DeMarcus Cousins. So this, and they did better in the regular season when they didn't have DeMarcus Cousins. So why did you put the Kings over the Pelicans after what happened? Um, I really think that the Kings, uh, those teams, I think the top seven will make the playoffs and the eight seed's really up for grabs. I don't think the Kings are better than the Pelicans or the Trailblazers, though I do think the, King, I think the Kings won't have playoff success, though I do think that the Kings' young pieces will really want to win right now because they don't have their first-round pick this year unless it's number one. So unless they're tanking, I think they can be the eight. All right, we're going to take one more caller before moving on to our final topic. Uh, let's go uh, Daniel... Uh, Alexander from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, yeah, from Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know how you can put the Jazz in front of the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are such a great team. They've got Cat, Butler, and Wiggins, and all four McDonald's all American. And the Jazz, they have some young talent, but I just think the Timberwolves are a better team. I don't, I don't know. I just need your thoughts on that. All right. Um, I'm first going to share mine, then Max will share his quickly. Um, so I think. The Timberwolves have the talent, but as you've seen for the past three years, they haven't had the chemistry, chemistry. to put together yeah, the, the right playoff team. Yeah, yeah I'm I not think gonna, Max is going to be I don't need to share. Uh, yeah, and I so uh, right now we're going to move on to our next topic, which uh, we'll talk about, Thank which you. is the um, – you're welcome uh, – which is the um, LeBron murals in L.A. being vandalized. So if you guys don't know, it was a picture of LeBron looking up at Lakers legends. And there was a white – big white line going through LeBron. Um, in the first place, I don't think LeBron should have been up on that mural. I think he should have had his own mural to himself, but I think he should have had to work up to get to this mural. I think it was wrong that the people of LA crossed him out, but eventually they were able to fix this problem and redo it all together. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Will. I think uh, he's not a legend, a Lakers legend yet, but I do think he'll get there. I agree with them for being upset about it, but they should not vandalize it. I mean, if they really care, they maybe protest or do something else in a different way. All right, my final statement about this is if the Lakers' success from LeBron, it won't be because of the Lakers, it will be because of LeBron. And I think that's what the Lakers fans are kind of upset about, and they don't want 
they don't want their legacy in the next in the near future to be because of LeBron. They want it to be because of the fans and what Magic has done for the team. So uh, thank you to our callers and um, to Max and Will. Uh, thank you. We're uh, off the record. We're signing thank you. off.